Now, there are some differences between these two molecules uh, beyond the manufacturer uh, and beyond the route of administration. Uh, Glofitimab, as I mentioned, is an IV molecule. It is typically given with a, another molecule ahead of time called obinutuzumab, in essence, to help prevent some of the side effects, which we'll discuss later. It is thereafter given in what we call a step-up dosing fashion at a dose of 2.5 milligrams followed by 10 milligrams and then 30 milligrams. After you reach the 30 milligram dose, and these step-up doses are given weekly, might I add. Uh, once you get to the 30 milligram dose, the drug is then given every three weeks uh, for a total of 12 cycles, which is approximately around eight and a half months of therapy. After you complete this treatment, the drug is stopped and patients are then observed. On the flip side with epcaridumab, this is a subcutaneous antibody, um, and it is also given up a step up, step up dose in fashion, but it is not given with any antibody pretreatment. Um, so it's given uh, in a dose of 0 0.08 micrograms, then 0.16 mic uh, micrograms, and then 48 milligrams is a full dose, again, given weekly. Um, once you reach this 48 milligram dose, uh, this treatment is still continued in a weekly fashion um, for approximately two and a half months thereafter. Uh, it goes into an every other month in, in, injection. Uh, and this is continued <clears throat> for approximately two months. And then thereafter, it's continued uh, monthly uh, until disease progression or intolerance. Uh, there is no designated stop point other than if the disease is not responding or the patient has an intolerance to this treatment. Now, again, as I mentioned, both of the agents typically have a, a very similar response rate, so we don't see a major difference. Um, very early on uh, in these treatments that we are right now, so we don't necessarily have full information on duration of response, which will be very important for teasing out the feasibility and practicality of fixed duration versus indefinite therapy between these two molecules. Um, and we would hope in the next uh, upcoming years we'll have more information about the durability of response. But uh, at the, our last meeting, at least with Glofitimab, they did produce some information uh, about responses over the last um, 30 months, uh, meaning 30 months of treatment for this patient population. Uh, and what did we receive from this information is that um, it does appear that there is uh, some durability to a response, especially for patients who obtain a complete response. Again, a complete response being where um, again, we don't see any evidence of the cancer uh, on imaging. Now, if we look at uh, long-term patients who get this complete response, um, at the two-year mark, about 55% of these patients are still in remission. Um, the median duration of complete response, meaning the median time that all these patients who obtain a complete response will remain in a complete response at this point for all the patients is about 26.9 months. Um, they did look at what we consider some landmark analysis, meaning look at a response based on certain time points. Uh, they looked at time points uh, at cycle three and time points what we consider end of treatment. Uh, it did look like the cycle three complete response rate was more indicative of long-term response, meaning the earlier time point versus the later time point, and that the median progression-free survival, meaning time that the disease has not come back in this patient population, was 31.1 months in patients who have attained a complete response by cycle three uh, versus 24 months if we look at complete response at the end of treatment. Now, again, this data does need to continue to mature before we get more information in this clinical setting.